so I've been riding personal electric vehicles for six years now. I have a sizable collection of electric skateboards, electric unicycles, and electric scooters. I've been quite happy with all of their performances and unique ride qualities. But then on October 7th, something terrible happened. The all new one wheel GT was announced. I was pretty excited about the incremental performance improvements on the one wheel GT. It promised more power and more range. So I went ahead and pre-ordered it on the same day it was announced, along with the Elite package. Once I got it, I rolled it about 3 months or so, and then decided to sell it. I loved many things about the GT and the one wheel in general, but also hated a lot of its limitations. So let's talk about them. Let's talk about what I love about the one wheel GT first. Number one is personalization. No other company or brand or any other forms of PEVs out there have this much options for personalization. It is absolutely jaw-dropping how much personality you can add to your board just from official selections. I can't name any eSkate or EUC brand that gives you this many choices to make the board your own. And then there's the aftermarket parts. From flight fins to Fangs 2.0, this is how you know One Wheel as a company is doing well. There are so many riders out there that they prop up secondary businesses just from making parts for One Wheels. Form factor. What I love about the One Wheel is the form factor. This one single giant wheel allows you to explore places that electric skateboards may have a hard time getting into. All the One Wheels also have amazing app integration. I love how you can track your ride and lifetime achievements and board statistics all in one app. You can even see popular routes around you as well as organize events on the app. I find the app to be well polished and mostly without any bugs. This is something not available on almost any other scooters or boards, uh, but it's not something I feel like I miss it dearly when I don't have it. Recently, there has been a lot of discussions around the right to repair your board should something go wrong. While I don't want to go into the details of Future Motion's anti-consumer actions, I do want to mention that it is awesome to even have a repair shop to send your board into in the first place. For almost all other forms of personal electric vehicles, once you get it, you are on your own. Even if you want a repair shop to fix your board, you can't because these companies are overseas in China and shipping an electric skateboard overseas often is more expensive than the board itself. So at least for some of you who don't have the free time to fix a board like me, I find it very convenient to have a repair shop that I can send the board to. Okay, let's talk about what I hate about the board. So I bought the Elite package. The top tier all-inclusive package that supposedly includes everything you should need for the one wheel GT but there was no plug included for the charging outlet. I'm just not happy that they marketed this package as the complete all-inclusive package when there are items that you clearly need and are not included. Right. I would have been fine if they said something along the lines of, hey, this package doesn't include this plug yeah, and your board doesn't come with a plug as well. I would have bought one alongside with the Elite package. But it's not until I opened the board and had everything set up that I find out that a simple cheap plastic wasn't included. It cost about $5 to buy and the shipping is $10. So it costs so for a cheap plastic plug that should have been included, I need to spend $15 to get. What's even more infuriating is that now this little plug is included in all the bundles. At some point, they started to include this plug, but they didn't even reach out to the previous bundle buyers and say, hey, we messed up. Here's, if you want one, we can ship one out to you um, because we include it for our current customers, but not our previous customers. But nope. No plug for you. Like you can tell this is a company about margin and profitability. At least in its current form, they're not about putting the customer first. 
even if it's a simple gesture like this. What I hate about the One Wheel GT is that it's extremely underwhelming in terms of specs and performance for the amount of money you pay. For a $2,250 personal electric vehicle, the One Wheel falls far behind its competitors and alternatives. Here's a list of the specs of other electric vehicles that I've gathered. The One Wheel GT has low range and low battery capacity. If you want to go far, this board is not for you. It also has low top speed, so if you want to go fast, this is not the board for you. It also has a low safety margin. If you want a board that's consistently safe and reliable, this also is not the board for you. So I took some nasty spill on this board. I posted this video asking the community what went wrong, and the general consensus was that I was leaning forward too hard while going up a slight hill. I do admit that I was leaning forward a bit. However, to me, it seemed reasonable because I was accelerating. And to compensate for the acceleration and the increasing speed, I need to shift my weight forwards. Except in this case, the official way is that you need to use your hips instead of putting your face forward. I was barely going 10 miles per hour when the board failed on me. What I learned is that in order to compensate for the stress on the motor while going uphill, you, you need to slow down. But this creates a question. While going up slopes of various degrees, your top speed safety margin changes and becomes lower. But you don't know how high or how low that safety margin has changed to. So until you stress test and find out for yourself and possibly falling again, the safest thing to do in this situation is to always be on a crawl when you go uphill, going very slow. You, you know, the joy of having almost any electric vehicle is the ability to bomb up a hill at top speed. I've fallen off boards before, but all of them was because of user error. I learn, I get up, and I get better. But for the one wheel to me, it is just a time bomb that might fail on you at any moment should you stand incorrectly for a brief moment or going up a hill at the wrong speed or for no reason at all. I just cannot trust this board again after getting fractured bones from these falls. Um, yeah, I, I was on painkillers for two weeks straight. Can't even hold anything up with my right arm. It's incredibly painful. And um, for a board that markets itself going more than 20 miles per hour to a board that goes up to 30 miles per hour for it to fail on you at 10 miles an hour because of a slight hill, it, it is unacceptable. The board is still ghosting five months after release. Videos showing the GT taking off by itself and hitting other cars and garages and garage doors. And one even made the news because it struck a pedestrian. Yet, uh, Future Motion would only fix your board if ghosting has already happened. They don't preemptively change it for you. So basically, you need to prove that your board was trying to hurt other people or yourself at least once before they send you a new footpad. And this is not acceptable. I've contacted Future Motion about this and their official response was that these are rumors, people are spreading lies, don't listen to them. Um, yeah, you decide who to listen to. I think all these video evidence is very clear on what is happening with this board in general. Uh, so I just don't feel safe on this board anymore. I used to think if I stay well below 20 miles per hour, it leaves a very safe zone that I would never fall off of it. But I was just very incorrect about that. Even going 10 miles per hour, you could still face plant. And also, I was constantly worried about the board ghosting. Right? I ride in parks, on trails. If, if any time I jump off and this board would take off, it would almost certainly hit someone's house or hit another person um, or go into the street and hit another car. I just, I cannot risk that happening. Lastly, the way it threw me off, I was only going 10 miles per hour and it really shook me. I was under the impression that this was the most powerful one wheel. As long as I'm going way below the top speed limit, I should be fine, but nope. Just know that when you are on a one wheel, 
you need to worry about mechanical failures in addition to user errors. And these mechanical errors are built into the fundamental design of the motor that it will fail when pushed past a threshold. And this threshold depends on your weight, the slope, how you position yourself on the wheel, the battery status, and sometimes it just does things on its own. So uh, a lot of complications there. So you're probably going to fall at some point. My final recommendation is that there are so many alternatives to the line wheel. They are all so much fun and perform much better. If you want to drop more than two grand on an electric vehicle, the one wheel should be dead last on your list.